Outside Health and Fitness Podcast, Episode 105, The Secret to Backcountry Adventure Success. Hi, this is Steve Stearns from OutsideHealthAndFitness.com. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Outside Health and Fitness Podcast. If you're new to the show, we like to stay fit and active by having fun outside. We like to ride, slide, run, walk, hike, bike, golf, frolf, swim, and ski. If it's fun outside and it keeps us healthy, we love it. So if you're like us and you want to be healthy, active, and have fun outside, then you found the right place. You know, if you're looking for adventure, almost nothing beats spending time in the backcountry. Whether you hike, climb, ski, ride, whatever, taking to the backcountry can be a thrilling experience, but it can also be dangerous. And it really comes down to your ability to make good decisions about different things that come up during your trip. You know, often those decisions that we make are going to have an impact on the success of the entire trip, whether or not you get back safely, and they can even be a matter of life and death. So today we're going to talk about how to maintain perspective when you're making decisions in the backcountry, how to look at failed attempts as just temporary setbacks that lead to success long term, and how being smarter about the decisions that you make could actually save your life. Now, in the last episode of the podcast, I talked about some of the reasons that you might want to consider skipping your workout if you're sick. I shared an easy way to determine if your symptoms are telling you to stay home or some ideas for modifying your workout if you do decide to work out through a cold. So if you miss that episode, um, I will have a link in today's show notes. So head on over to outsidehealthandfitness.com forward slash 105. Just click on last week and you can get all caught up. Now, today we are talking about backcountry adventure, and one key to success is preparation. You know, preparing your body to be strong, fit, and ready means regular exercise, and one of my favorite routines to do is Tabata training. So I put together a free comprehensive guide with my favorite morning Tabata routine so you can check it out. If you're somebody like me that doesn't have a lot of time during the day to work out, you are going to love Tabata training because it only takes four minutes, literally four minutes, a couple of minutes to warm up, a couple of minutes to cool down. But in general, the exercise part is only four minutes. It is fast. It's effective. It does work. It's scientifically proven to work because you're putting everything you've got into those four minutes and you will be exhausted, but you will be hooked. Now stop by outsidehealthandfitness.com forward slash 105. And if you sign up for the free newsletter, I'll send you a copy of the free Tabata guide so you can check it out for yourself. Okay, so let's get right into the secret to backcountry adventure success. I'm going to share my screen here. And if you're listening to this, I am doing this on uh, YouTube again this week. So there is a video presentation that goes along with the podcast. And if you go to either the show notes um, or you go to outsidehealthandfitness.com forward slash YouTube, you can go right to uh, my YouTube channel there and check out the this presentation and other presentations. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the first slide up here, so we're going to get right into it. So the, the secret to backcountry adventure success. Um, this quote is the overriding principle of our, our talk today. So it's getting to the top is optional, getting down is mandatory. And this was a uh, quote that Ed Vester's, uh said and also has kind of structured his entire career around. You know, I first uh, heard about Ed Vester's when I read the book Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. And this book, if you haven't read this book, it's an awesome book. Uh, it just details the 1996 tragedy on Mount Everest when eight climbers were killed, among them uh, Rob Hall and Scott Fisher. And the book has, there's a lot of tragedy in the book, but there's also a lot of heroism in the book too. You know, Ed Vesters was one of the climbers on the mountain that day that was calling for the others to turn around because he could tell that things were deteriorating quickly and he knew how important it was for them just to get back, get back down. Now, Ed is one of America's premier uh, mountaineers. He summited all 14 of the high peaks in the world, and he did it without supplemental oxygen 
most impressively, he did it by being very thoughtful in his decision making and being very patient and persistent in his pursuit. So Ed takes a smart approach to mountain climbing, and this is an approach that we all can take. In fact, I've taken this approach in some of my backcountry adventures on Mount Washington. You know, Mount Washington is only 6,000 feet high, but it does have the worst weather in the world. In fact, people who are training to climb Everest train on Mount Washington because of that. And there's been many times that we've been up there where the avalanche danger is high or the you know the bad weather is rolling in or visibility is bad whatever and we've turned around and you know we used to say better to ski another day than to make this the last one not quite as eloquent as ed's quote but the same basic idea that uh you know you have to be prepared to turn back and that's okay you'll come back another time and uh you'll be successful so one of the things that can influence your decision when you're in the backcountry is things like, well, geez, I drove two hours to get here, or this is the only time I have available to do this. So we're going to go for it. And you kind of get that sort of attitude. And that is the kind of thing that gets people into trouble. So don't be afraid to turn back. And there are some very legitimate reasons. Like if bad weather is rolling in, you know, in the backcountry, when bad weather rolls in, you never know how bad it's going to be. So when you see that happening, turn around and get back down. If you're low on water, there's a definite reason to turn around and go back. Water is critically important in the backcountry, and you don't want to get stuck without that. If someone in your group is injured or struggling or having a hard time, you have a responsibility to turn back. Even if you could make it, that's not, <clears throat> that's not enough. It's, it's about the group. If you're off course, if you're lost, turn around, go back find the tr you know the last point that you knew where you were and head back that's that's a smart way and if it's getting late have a turnaround time if you have a turnaround time of 2:30 p.m. no matter where you are in your uh, adventure turn around stick to your turnaround time because when it gets late you run out of daylight and sometimes the temperature drops into dangerous uh, uh, degrees and you don't want to get caught out unprepared in the backcountry like that. One of the most impressive things about uh, Ed Veasters is that he looked at the times when he was unable to summit, he didn't look at those as failures. He just looked at them as setbacks and another step toward success. You know, in his quest to climb all 14 high peaks, his final peak was Annapurna, which is not the highest uh, peak, but it is one of the deadliest mountains in the world. It's killed a lot of people. And Ed, despite the fact that he spent a lot of time training, he traveled around the world, he had um, sponsors and people counting on him and thousands of dollars invested, he turned around from the summit on Annapurna two times before successfully making the attempt the third time. And it was that guiding principle of getting back that that was the mandatory. That was the thing that he placed the highest value on that helped him make that smart decision. You know, if you think about it, if he pushed through on that first attempt or second attempt and the mountain swept him away, he not only wouldn't have met his goal, he wouldn't be here. So he's very smart about the way that he approached that situation and he didn't look at that as a failure. If you never quit, you never fail. And it's something that we can all keep in mind in our backcountry adventures as well. You know, the goal is to get back. That's the number one thing. If you've ever gone hiking with uh, kids or maybe somebody that's new to hiking, a lot of times they will set their sights on the summit as the goal. And as an experienced hiker, you know, you know, that the summit is only halfway there. It's, it's getting back. It's getting to the summit and getting back. That's the goal. That's really what we want to do. So it's important to conserve your energy. You can't give it all you've got to get to the summit because then you'll have nothing to get back. You have to conserve your supplies and you have to make sure that you give yourself 
enough time. These are the things that make that backcountry adventure successful, fun, and memorable. So that's why we do it. You know, we go out into the backcountry to have adventure and to have fun and to make memories. And along the way, there are a lot of decisions that we have to make. And I think that if we keep, if we all keep Ed's quote in mind as that overriding principle, whenever we have to make these decisions in the backcountry, we make smarter decisions and we have more success in our adventures. You know, getting to the top is optional. Getting down is mandatory. I'm going to have links for Into Thin Air, uh, the book by John Krakauer in the show notes. And I'll also have a really fascinating TED talk that Ed, uh, Ed Vesters gave about his accomplishment of climbing those 14 high peaks and particularly Annapurna. It's, it's a really fascinating uh, video to watch. So make sure that you head on over to the show notes to check that out. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Maybe. We'll see. Hopefully I'm successful. Stop. Yay, I did it. Okay. Sometimes I'm a little technology challenged, you know. It's not that easy. Okay. So um, I want to thank you again for listening to the show and being part of the community. You know, if you are getting value from the show and you'd like to help me bring you more shows like this one, you can. And I have a few ideas. One is you can subscribe and leave a review in iTunes or Stitcher so that you never miss an episode. That really helps a lot. You can also tell a friend about the show. Word of mouth, right? Um, they'll thank you for, for sharing it. And you can visit the show notes today at outsidehealthandfitness.com forward slash 105. Click on the support button and you can pledge as little as a dollar per episode. Become a producer of the show and help me produce more of these. I really appreciate any appreciate anything that you can do, any support that you give. I love hearing from you if you have questions or if you have ideas for shows. That's all great, all good stuff. Oh, and I want to remind you about the free Tabata guide. When you sign up for the free weekly newsletter, um, I'll send you exclusive outside health and fitness articles, tips, resources, I'll make sure that you are notified when we have new shows, and I'll also send you that Tabata exercise guide. You'll go through that really quickly. I mean, by tomorrow, you could be giving uh, a Tabata workout a try, and I know you're going to love it. You're going to be amazed at how great you feel when you do one. So everything that we talked about today is at outsidehealthandfitness.com forward slash 105. Thanks again for listening to the show. I really appreciate the time, and I will see you outside.